Last episode was an extremely eventful episode as we made a couple of big-time trades, including acquiring up-and-coming second baseman Nolan Gorman. Now, he is defensively limited, so to speak. Doesn't offer a ton of speed either, but he can hit. And he's having a really nice season, and he's someone that gets on base. That's something we needed. We went out and got him. The Cardinals had a ton of hitters. They needed help on the pitching front, and we were able to trade some pitching in order to get Gorman. Uh, he should be someone that hits really, really well for us. So I'm pretty excited about that. If we go to transactions here, you can see our completed trades. And I, I made a lot of moves in terms of promotions and things like that. But we made two trades. Nolan Gorman from the Cardinals in exchange for Seth Lugo, Daniel Lynch, and Will Smith. The Cardinals needed pitching. We gave them pitching. Does the value exactly line up there? Maybe Gorman's a little bit more valuable than what I gave up, but they needed pitching. We needed a hitter. I think it's a good marriage for both sides there. And we also acquired Spencer Jones in a deal for Michael Waka. So our entire mindset is trading veterans to get young and emerging talents. And we only really got two players while trading four. We still have a number of holes within our team and within our roster, but... If you look at our trade block, from our end of things, currently Hunter Renfro, Nick Anderson, John Schreiber, and Salvador Perez, as well as a couple others I don't really expect to move, but if I get an offer, if we can make something work, I will send them elsewhere. Dyron Blanco, Adam Frazier, Chris Stratton, Tyler Duffy. I don't know what the return is going to be for, the, uh, for those guys, but if you look at you know some of the contracts here, and I wish I could see here. Yeah, we can. The guys with expiring contracts of the the veterans, like, you know, the guys that are 28, 29, and older, Hunter Renfro, we could hold on to and keep him for another year. He is struggling, though, and I might just want to cut bait on that. Brady Singer's still in there, but Nick Anderson, John Schreiber, these relievers I'm probably trying to get rid of, and Adam Frazier, there's really not a point to keep him so we might be pretty active here at the trade deadline. We're going to end up seeing what our draft class looks like. I think it was going to be pretty good based on some of the players we got and based on, you know, seeing some of the potentials lay out. Could end up being a pretty good class. The overalls don't seem to be anything crazy, but I think we're going to be pretty happy with our class based on, you know, what we've seen so far. So we'll get that uh, after August 1. We'll figure it out. But we have one more game left here in July. And the trade deadline is effectively now, right? So let's go ahead and simulate this game. And the Astros are interested in offering us a trade. We'll take a look. Ooh, this is interesting. So Dyron Blanco is a player we do not use. He's at AAA. He's 30 years old. He does not figure to work into the team at all. Had a decent year in 2023, by the way. Small sample, but was fairly productive. For Rafael Montero, he's a really solid reliever. He's 33, though, and he's expensive. Would be my pause. Like, is this something that actually helps us get better long-term? I don't think so. But we could potentially work something out with the Astros. I might be more interested in Dylan Coleman. He's 27. He's under contract for a long time. Only three pitches. But... That could be something we look to do. I don't really want Rafael Montero is the thing. So, I w is there some sort of a trade finder? Yes, there is. So, let me add some of the players I'm interested in moving. I think in, in terms of the starting pitching, not really looking to get a, a rid of any of these guys, but I would be looking to move a reliever. And it would make sense to do that as well, because guys like Chris Stratton, two years, I mean, he's not especially expensive, but... Two years, one year for Schreiber, one year for Anderson. These guys do have expiring contracts. They will be free agents. We're not really competing right now. We're, you know, we're struggling to stay at 500. That's not really going to be a playoff team. So I'm thinking we try and package some of these players in to get, you know, a decent prospect if we can. Maybe, you know, nothing crazy, but something. And maybe if we can get an MLB ready player, that would be cool as well. We'll take a look, see if anything aligns. I think this is the first trade we're going to make. 
We are trading the two players I talked about just a moment ago to the Brewers. That's Adam Frazier, and that was Chris Stratton. In exchange, we're picking up a starting pitching prospect, Robert Gasser from the Milwaukee Brewers. Only C potential, unfortunately. I think he's got the opportunity to be a little bit better than that in real life. He's a lefty starting pitching prospect who is developing a little bit to start here in 2024. Doesn't look especially crazy, but is certainly good depth for us. You can really never have enough starting pitching. And Robert Gasser joins the fold. He'll probably go straight up to AAA. The Tigers are offering Jackson Job for Nick Anderson, John Schreiber, and Hunter Renfro. I'd be so stupid not to accept this in real life. In the game, Jackson Job only has B potential, 68 overall, and it's a trade within the division. I'm not going to do it, but, I mean, it's, it's a good trade for us. How did the Twins get Andy Rodriguez? Are there two Andy Rodriguez's? Or did the Twins just trade for him from the Pirates? He was a catcher, listed as a first baseman here. Maybe it's somebody different. Austin Martin. I do like the idea of getting Emmanuel Rodriguez. In real life, he's a big power-hitting center fielder. But again, it's in the division. I'd prefer not to do that. But it's an option. Here's another Max Muncy. But that one is actually real. Not, um, not to be confused with the Dodgers' Max Muncy. Although I think they even share a birth date. I think it's, it's very weird between those two. Okay, the trade I'm going to be making is Nick Anderson, Hunter Renfro, and Andrew Hoffman to get Elijah Green. Currently the fourth ranked center fielder in the Nationals organization. Elijah Green's a very interesting young player. Big power profile, 6'3", 225. Contact is actually getting uh, quite a big boost here. Very good athlete. Hitting well in the minors so far this year at... I believe double A, and with Robert Hassel and Dylan Cruz and even Victor Robles, Stone Garrett, James Wood, they're kind of stacked in the outfield, not only with current MLB talent, but also Lane Thomas, of course, but also with prospects as well, mostly. James Wood, Dylan Cruz, Robert Hassel's kind of fallen off a bit in terms of prospects, you know, ranking, but still a potential here in the game. I think Elijah Wood is a, a decent get for us. Only B potential. Again, I want to try to keep this a little bit more on the realistic side. They're getting an, an MLB-ready outfielder to complete the group over Eddie Rosario or, I mean, even Dylan Cruz right now. Is he even called up? He's not called up yet. It's going to be Victor Robles probably for the Nationals. So we're giving them an MLB-ready starting corner outfielder. And this is the trade. They're also Im improving their bullpen with our highest-rated reliever and getting a whatever pitching prospect, let's be honest, in Andrew Hoffman. But he um, is developing somewhat nicely, 24 years old. This is the trade, taking a chance on the high upside of Elijah Green. And I think the first order of business is to move him to the corner outfield. He's got the speed to play center. Maybe it's even Spencer Jones who moves over. He's got decent speed as well, but... Maybe right field is a better fit for Spencer Jones, but I think that's, again, pretty good a uh, pretty good trade for us. We wanted to improve our hitters. We wanted to improve our outfield, and I think we've done both through the draft and now, of course, you know, at the trade deadline as well. So Spencer Jones, he will be now a primary right fielder just because it makes more sense for our team. That's what it comes down to. And I also moved Gavin Cross to left field. He's... Probably not far away from a triple-A call-up. He's hitting quite well at double-A. He's developing really, really well. However, I'm just not ready to make a move just yet. But eventually, he will be our starting triple-A left fielder at some point this season. And I think that's probably going to do it for trades. As we are officially in August. The trade deadline has passed. Let's see our draft picks. Oh, I got to... Signed Bobby Montez, that's right. He was being a little bit difficult. I, I have, you know, enough money to bring him in. I'm going to sign him over slot value just to make sure he signs. It's the last day to do it, and Bobby Montez is signed on. As I said, and I've said this a couple times now, I don't really understand why his ranking was so low at first. The draft rank has now changed to 44, but this is a guy we were able to take down the board. We knew his potential would be high because he was 95% scouted, and he just wasn't 
viewed very highly by the rest of the league in the draft. And I feel like even though his overall is low and his age is not, he's not out of high school at 18, I feel like he's a pretty good draft pick. You know, maybe I have it wrong, but, you know, I, I feel like you guys told me to value potential, and I think I have done that. And all of our draft picks have been signed. And do we not see him here? I don't know when we see him. Gotta fix our lineups here. Oh, yeah, because our pitching. And also, right field. I traded Hunter Renfro. Well, Drew Waters is going to solve that for now. Jake Brent's still injured for about a week, but eventually he'll get the call up. Our bullpen is pretty poor based on some of the moves we've made here. But it's all, you know, with trying to get better long term. Robert Gasser to AAA. Alec Marsh on IL. I think we're actually probably going to have to go out and sign some free agent pitchers. Blake Snell is here. Jordan Montgomery. Blake Snell, of course, is signed with the Giants in real life. J.D. Martinez to the Mets. Jordan Montgomery remains unsigned, although apparently has some long-term deals. Doesn't really make sense to sign him right now. Post-recording here, Jordan Montgomery actually signed a long-term deal with the Diamondbacks after the recording of this video, so there you go. Why would I do that? We just need to fill out the roster. I don't want to give Jose Cisnero security. I'm looking at a one-year deal. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Who wants to sign for a one-year deal? I can give Aaron Loop slightly more money. $1.3 million a year. Okay. Let's bring Nick Wickard back. He's like, not great. I don't really want to give... Nobody wants the one-year deal. Give you $1 million to just play on the team. Sammy Infante? There we go. Could also bring Brad Keller back to be a long man. I don't know why these guys think they're going to get five-year deals. Nobody's going to offer you that out of free agency if you are Brad Keller. There's just simply no way. I, will they not consider anything that isn't a long-term contract? No, I'm not doing it. We're going to have to sign some of these just like random 23-year-old free agents that will just sign for nothing. So, more depth in the organization. We can make a decision about some of these players long-term. But we just need more players in the organization William Fuchs. Our roster is currently full. All right, we should be good now. What a moment. Bottom 10, one out. Steven Cruz is trying to get out of a jam. Steven Cruz is someone that is new to the team. In fact, very new. This might be his debut because we just signed him at a free agency. Sent him straight up to the major league roster. Added him to the 40 man. And now he needs to work some magic so we can beat the division rival Tigers. Mark Canna at the plate. Vet hitter that's been a very solid player for a long time with the A's, Mets, Brewers. And now with the Tigers. Trying to induce weak contact. Got a ground ball at Witt to Gorman. Double play out of the inning. He worked some magic. And you know what? We need some relievers that can get out of some jams because we have other relievers that will put us in some jams. Let's see if we can at least go ahead here in the 11th. We're going to finish playing this game against another long-time vet, Andrew Chafin. He's been around, Diamondbacks, maybe the A's as well. Certainly, he was a Tiger and still is a Tiger, but certainly Diamondbacks. Who's A's? Cubs, certainly Cubs. Here's Nolan Gorman, one for five. Ooh, and that is a fastball that I thought was not going to be a fastball. I thought this could end up being a slider or something. That just stayed true right down the middle. That was a really good pitch to hit. That's a really good pitch to hit, though. Slider hangs up in the air. We're going to send Bobby Witt Jr. home. 99 speed is too much. And we go ahead here late in the game. Nolan Gorman, the new Royal, with an RBI single here in extras. Gotta love it. That's why we traded for him. We knew he could make in impact offensively, and that's exactly what he just did. Salvi hit something to the gap. Gorman doesn't have great speed, but something to the gap could potentially score him as we get lucky there with a called ball up in the zone. Looks like it might have been a strike. That one does catch, though. 
That face cam placement probably a little bit better. Here's a 2-1 to Salvi. Ooh, that's a really, really tough pitch to hit. Sinker down and away, catching the zone. Sinker low for ball three. The Pasquatch on deck. Full count to Perez. And that's a really, really tough pitch. I really did not want to see another sinker down and away. It's exactly what it was, and in a spot where you really can't take that pitch. And that is a really tough ground ball double play. And now we need some type of a two-out rally. Pasquantino is 0 or 5. And now has to go lefty-lefty against Andrew Chafin and his sinkers. I don't like it. Like when he hangs pitches, though, but couldn't stay back on it. Roll over, and we need our pitching to win us this game. Nolan Gorman gives us the go-ahead RBI, go-ahead run here. But we need to finish strong. Steven Cruz out here to start. We're going to warm up MacArthur. Definitely come out here for the save. But I'm going to start with Steven Cruz. He's pitched well. Gets an out. But at the same time, the runner advances to third base. And that is obviously not what we wanted. You're really trying to get a strikeout in that spot. And the sinker is not exactly a swing and miss type pitch. This ball is hit to fairly deep right center field. Tigers will tie this game. Ground ball at Gorman, and that is the 11th. We went ahead, but the Tigers answer right back, and that's why you really can't get you know any type of contact in that spot. We're going to leave Pasquantino in the game. Who knows how, the, how long this one could go. Nelson Velasquez at the plate. Home run makes it interesting, but that sinker, man. It's such a tough pitch to hit. Sinker away, you're just not really going to be able to elevate that too well. Need something like that. A fastball up in the zone. Velasquez cranks it. 100 miles per hour off the bat and foul. But had the right idea. Ball one. And he gets plunked. Don't mind that. Down in the count. Free base runner. We're going to leave him on. MJ Melendez against the lefty. But that clutch rating is going to play a bigger factor than the contact. With a runner in scoring position, and how do you miss? It's a hanging slider up in the zone. I thought that was going to be a three-run shot off the bat of MJ Melendez. But he pops it straight up, infield fly. And the score remains the same. Runners can advance. Again, we'll need a hit. That's not a swing. Why did it check? Sinker down a little bit early on it. Maybe it would have been a ground ball double play, but I don't know why it checks sometimes when I'm holding down the button. Kyle Isbell hits this one pretty well. Three for five in this game. Needed to land, and it doesn't. Is that Riley Green out in right field? Oh, man. That would have scored probably two. Would have probably scored two. Steven Cruz going to stay out there. I like what I saw. And I want to see if he can continue to deal. Terry Carpenter, three for five. Only problem is... Get no change up on Steven Cruz's only off speed offering is this here slider. One, two. Not really located well enough. Need to be more over in this location. The ground ball, Bobby Witt. No need to check the runner back. He's already standing on second base. And that's a big out number one. Is Steven Cruz going to be a diamond in the rough here? He's got some pretty good stuff, and he's able to fan Jake Rogers. And this will certainly be his last inning of work, and probably his last batter here. And hopefully that's not because the game's about to end. Spencer Torkelson hitting just 155 with runners in scoring position so far this year. And I'd like to keep that about the same. It's going to be a ground ball. No, it's not. It's going to be a one-hopper in front of Drew Waters. Here's a play at the plate. Not in time. Game over. Tigers win. Need to lay out for that one, probably. I think it was one batter too many. One batter too many. Bobby Witt homers, Nolan Gorman homers. Silver lining, Bobby Witt's getting hot. Love to see that. But this is, you know, more of a rebuilding year for us. 
It's going to be tough to allow eight runs and win a game. Finally, Jake Brents is back. Let's throw these guys on the bench. And Jake Brents is definitely a candidate to move up to the Major League roster. And we will promote him. Which means somebody needs to get sent down. And I'll tell you, I was so impressed by Steven Cruz. He's going to stay up. John McMillan, who has a 27 ERA, and will be moving down. And for the first time, we can actually view our draft picks. And here we go. 65 overall, 63, 64, 60, 59, 46, and 55. Doesn't look too crazy in terms of overall. The potential actually does look quite good. And we did know that for a number of these guys. Rhett Park is the interesting one, though. It said he was going to have, you know, in that 88 to 99 potential range. Or, or it could have been even lower than that at one point. But ends up having 97 potential. Which is, that's got to be fantastic. The only thing is, he's 21 years old. And he's only a 59 overall. And he's not great defensively. He just seems like he's going to be average everywhere. Maybe even below average. I thought he might have been a little bit better. But we didn't really have the scouting report right in him. But the potential's high. This does look good to me. Bobby Montez is a 60. Again, like, I I was kind of hoping for guys closer to the 70s, and we didn't really get that with some of these. But the potential is high. Chris Bates is a 94. He was one of those players that I thought was just going to be average, but his potential is really high. Now, having 94 potential doesn't mean they're going to end up being 94 overall players, if I know anything from Reds franchise and Pirates franchise and Braves franchise before that. But it is nice to see Juan Soriano, though, is quite interesting. 94 potential, 63 overall with good contact and especially good power against righties to start. He is 22, though. Can only play first base, but does have an arm. I might consider moving him if it, if it makes sense. And then our first pick, Morgan Gilly, already looks great. 65 overall for him, but the reason I am so excited is because fielding and reaction are already very solid. Speed, stealing, base runner aggressiveness, borderline elite, certainly elite as a collective group there. And then contact already pretty high. Vision, great. Discipline, not so bad. 5'9 is 22 years old already. But I could see a path to him starting in center field for us before long. Maybe a season or two. Rondell Galarraga is only a 46 overall. Does have 83 potential. This was another one of those guys we took a shot on, but his overall is really low. And the final player of the bunch is Mitch Soriano. 21 years old, only a 55 overall. Does have 80 potential, but seems to be a really long way away from that. His hit per nine is only a 20, and he's 21. I know 21 is not like the end-all be-all. A lot of prospects don't end up you know, getting a chance until they're 25-ish. But some of the really good ones are in the MLB by age 22 if you're upper echelon. And it doesn't really appear that we're going to have that, except for maybe Chris Bates. Chris Bates could be the one that actually ends up being pretty good. The rest I have some, some questions about. But the potential does look good, but is it real? Well, I just spoke to the expert, the Antortiz, about it. If you guys don't check him out or don't know him, check him out. YouTube.com slash the Antortiz does... MLB rebuilds a lot. He's seen a million of these drafts, and apparently it's not actually uh, that crazy. I, I, I'm like, all right, we got a lot of high potential, but apparently that's just what happens. In MLB 24, you can see the, you know, the Rangers here uh, with some upper echelon guys. Pirates as well. Rory, uh, Rory Roberts, who we looked at. Stuart Hook, the closer. Malcolm Plaza. Uh, and a lot of these guys are actually higher overalls than what we drafted. We had no players higher than, what, 65 overall? So... Okay, not that weird. I thought I had a really good draft for a second, but it just seems to be, like, fine. Giants here with multiple players, 86 potential or higher, 96 for Rolando Crocker. But the overall is so low that it makes me wonder, does it even matter? If the overall isn't high enough, what is it going to take, 10 years for one of these guys to reach their potential or even close to it? I don't know. I'm not going to be too upset about the draft. I, I think we got some solid players. And even though the potential is high, as I said, I I don't know. If I could go back and do it again, I would sure love to get some higher overall players. But I got to live with what you get, I guess. Well, August is going very poorly. 
We have just two wins. And that's what happens when you sell at the trade deadline. You know, I knew what I was doing. I knew that we were setting ourselves up for failure. But I think that's okay. And a lot of times you see that happen in baseball. You don't want to be, you know, one leg in the in the pool, right? You want to be either all in or all out. And we kind of took ourselves all out in preparation for the future. A lot of holes on the team right now. But, of course, you know, I think we're setting ourselves up for a more successful future as Jake Brents is now in the game and Nolan Gorman broken shin will end his year 60 day injured list that sucks we are now 59 and 76 we continue to lose but you know as I mentioned it, it kind of is what it is unfortunately we end August at 60 and 77 Third in the AL Central. 29 games back. It's not going especially well. And our big trade acquisition is out for the year. That stuff sucks. Let's see how our pickups are playing in the minors. So Spencer Jones, his numbers are not all that bad. Hitting 274. Only two home runs here. A little bit, a little bit disappointing. Con uh, contact's going up quite a bit, but the power just really not there right now. Elijah Green, on the other hand, is crushing it. Really love what he's doing. He's going to earn a call-up at some point. And then Gavin Cross, I said, would earn a call-up as well. I think he's earned it. Tyler Gentry is not playing well at AAA. We're going to send him down. And easy as that, Gavin Cross takes his place. All right, we have September call-ups. We will be moving some players up to our Major League roster. Michael Massey is one of those guys. I thought he'd spend more time at the MLB level this season, but he didn't really hit in the minors, so I didn't really feel great about moving him up. Could always add more pitching. Sammy Infante has crushed it at AAA. We're going to move him up to MLB. And Alec Marsh will move him up as well. I'm going to hold some of these prospects down for a little bit longer. Wish Robert Gasser was performing better. Asa Lacey's been quite good at AAA. He is developing fairly well. But we're going to hold him down at AAA for a little while longer. And I doubt we're going to go on some type of a run here. We have 15 pitchers. <sighs> You're kidding me. Just kidding, Alec Marsh. Enjoy AAA. <laughs> and we're going to call up somebody else. Nick Prado. Nick Prado is a good call-up candidate. I think that makes sense. And we'll even lead Michael Massey off against righties. Why not? Nelson Velasquez, broken shin. My... My uh, members of my team are dropping like flies here. 62 and 83 now. I wanted to get a Cole Reagan start in there this episode. But our team is just being massacred. It's brutal what we have right now. Josh Lester's crushing it. We called him up. He was having a pretty good minors uh, season, minor league season. But nothing really to write home about. But he's he's come up and he's hit very well at the major league level as well. There's just clearly no spot for him. Bobby Witt Jr. is back to being cold. All of the contact, plus one against lefties, plus six power against righties. Defense is improving. Everything really is improving except for the numbers. He was hitting at 200 for a while. So I guess it's a little bit better now. Salvi with 33 homers. 17 for Michael Garcia. And let's go Cole Reagans against Garrett Cole. Probably going to be a pretty bad matchup for us. But it's Cole against Cole. Reagans against Garrett, I guess. Uh, Garrett Cole, of course, injured in real life. We'll have to see what that ends up being. As I record, this is March 26th. We don't really know other than that. He's probably going to miss a month or two. Could be three, four, five. Could be very bad. We'll have to see. But here in the game, he's healthy and pitching well as we make the trip to the Bronx and take on the Bronx Bombers. I'll tell you who this doesn't look like is Anthony Volpe. Numbers look pretty good on him. Not having a great season again, but that does not look like Anthony Volpe at the plate. As we'll see if Cole Reagans could have a good game against this Yankees lineup that features Juan Soto and Aaron Judge. Labor Torres hits lefties quite well. Not a great matchup for Reagans, admittedly. But hopefully he's able to pitch well enough to hold the Yankees to 
you know, maybe just a couple of runs or less. I almost think that looks like Trent Grisham warming up at the on-deck circle. Let's see who the Yankees have hitting second here. We expect to see Soto, Judge, Labor, potentially even Jason Dominguez as well. I'm interested to see what lineup the Yankees are rolling out here in September. Of course, I am a Yankees fan. And you want to see a lot of these guys do well in real life. But today, not so much. Volpe really working the count here. Two and two. Reagan's trying to put him away. And finally will. Induces weak contact ground ball. And that's out number one. And it is Trent Grisham acquired in the Juan Soto deal. Known for his patience and defense, takes a, uh, should have been a strike, honestly, should have been, but called ball. And uh, umpires on the Yankee payroll. Down 2-0 already, this is tough. Got a ground out though, and now Juan Soto hitting third in the Yankee order. Another hitter with tremendous patience. Could see him hitting third for the Yankees, but I, I also think he's going to hit second. Still have not seen Aaron Judge. I guess he's hitting cleanup. Highly doubt the Yankees do that very often. But it's actually Glaber Torres hitting cleanup, followed by Stan and Trevino. I guess Aaron Judge has the day off, and that's why Grant Grisham's at the top of the order. Glaber wearing number 13. Not what number he wears. Wears number 25. And looking for a hit here, but lines out to center. A-Rod was 13 for a while. Then Joey Gallo most recently. Here's Giancarlo Stanton. They got a lot of numbers wrong. MLB The Show this year. It's very strange. I don't know how it happened or why they did it, but a lot of numbers are just incorrect. And I don't know why that is. Stanton does wear number 27, if I recall. But Glaber was wearing like number three for a while in uh, on when I was playing Diamond Dynasty. Just he doesn't wear that. I you know how I know. It's retired by one of the greatest hitters of all time. It's so strange. Change up. Ground ball over to Reagans, who beats Trevino to the bag. And that is the end of the second inning. Reagans dealing so far, but it's early. And the Yankees have not made these at-bats easy. Here's Austin Wells. So they've got Trevino and Austin Wells in the lineup. They're hitting a lot of lefties against the lefty Reagans. I mean, Trent Grisham, Juan Soto... Austin Wells, and this is not a team that actually has a lot of Yankees or has a lot of lefties on the team. It's a team has been dominated by right-handed bats over the past several years. And against the lefty, they're throwing out more lefties than I feel like I've ever seen. This is at least three left-handed batters in the first seven hitters for the Yankees. I haven't seen Alex Verdugo yet. He could be playing in the outfield. As well, strikes out looking. Old Uncle Charlie from Cole Reagans. Big 12-6 curveball. Looked like it could have been 12-6. Maybe slightly more uh, horizontal movement than that. As DJ LeMahieu will flare one into center. And that drops for the first hit of the game. It's actually Oswaldo Cabrera in the lineup for the Yankees. That looks exactly like him. That's impressive. Anthony Volpe, on the other hand, not so much. Oswaldo strikes out. Reagan dominates the AB. Three pitches, three strikes later. Changeup gets a ground ball. That should be out of the inning. Glove flip to Witt. And we are out of it. 2 0 right now. We able or where we were able to score some runs off Garrett Cole. Unusual, but welcome. It's 2 0. Of course, our season is over. But, you know, we have some things to look forward to. And, of course,. Cole Reagan should be one of those things to look forward to. A true ace in the making on the mound. I'm hoping he has an awesome 2024. Not only for my fantasy team, but it's just it's, it's a cool story, man. You got a guy that kind of comes almost out of nowhere. Just a trade piece and then becomes one of the most dominant starters in baseball for a stretch. It's awesome. So I'm hoping he can keep it up. See if that's possible. Reagan's here. Making quick work of the Yankees. Juan Soto, though, we know is going to likely take a strike or two here. Oh, he does let it fly on that cutter. Definitely looked like it tied him up. He's an interesting fit with the Yankees. Obviously, he's just a great player. Easy top 10 player in baseball, if not even higher than that. Maybe top five. 
But he doesn't pull the ball in the air that much. And that's the whole reason you'd want a big power hitting lefty here at Yankee Stadium. But obviously, you're not going to say no to him in the order. He's incredible. But at the same time, will he pull the ball in the air this year and really make use of the short porch at Yankee Stadium? Will he change his approach? Highly unlikely. And maybe you don't even want him to. But we'll see what he does. 0-2 oh, to Glaber. Fastball. Fouled back as Glaber stays alive. I better change up low and away. Not located well, and Glaber takes it. How about a curveball? Not really going to the slider all that much, but don't need to when the curveball is as nasty as that. Strike three. I wish Reagan struck out more hitters. His numbers have not been incredible in terms of strikeouts this season, but you know what? He's pitched pretty well. ERA under four. Not bad. At times, Giancarlo Stanton can be the king of flailing at off-speed pitches. Trying to make that happen here. You know he's really locked in if he's taking them. Sometimes Giancarlo is the best hitter on the planet. You cannot pitch to the guy. Other times he looks like the worst hitter on the planet. But that just goes to show how tough of a game baseball is. Trying to shut him down here. Makes weak contact. A rarity for Stanton. Ground out. So that's going to be a hit. That might even be extra bases. Very tough to come by at Yankee Stadium, and you can see it there. Only a single for Trevino. And strike three. Reagan sits down Wells. Lefty, lefty must be a nightmare. Now, I think Cole Reagan's actually added a sinker in real life. We'll have to see, you know, how often he's throwing that before considering, uh, you know, making it part of his arsenal here in the game. I doubt it. Just because he's already got he's the cutter, which he throws a lot, slider, curveball, and then of course you need the four seamer and his changeup's a monster pitch. So I don't really know that they would let you get it in here because you can't throw six pitches in the game. I think you're limited to five. I'm fairly certain of that, which is annoying because some pitchers throw more than five pitches. Kind of drizzling here in the Bronx. I'd like to get this game called off early. That would be cool. <laughs> Save our arms and just take the win over the Yankees. That'd be sweet. I hate a rain out in real life. Always oh, sucks. Reagan's with another strikeout. Cabrera goes down swinging. And that is one thing you've been able to say about the Yankee order over the past several years. Uh, they're not afraid to strike out. <laughs> they get their rips in. They get their, uh, their money on uh, some of these hacks. Their money's worth, I should say. And... Uh, Seen no different today. Reagan's with a quite a few strikeouts. Massey diving stop. Not in time to catch the speedy Volpe. Ground ball at Garcia. Easy double play around the horn. Inning over. Beautiful job done by the Royals defense. Ball's hit in the air. Haven't seen a ton of contact in the air today. It's interesting for Reagan's, who's really a fastball pitcher. But we've been working with that cutter a lot. And that's a pitch that can generate some weak contact. Soto flies out. Trying to work through another clean inning. Glaber hits a line drive to left center field. But a nice play made in the gap. And it's two quick outs. I will say the Yankees are really starting to see Reagans a bit more this third time through the order. And typically that is when starting pitchers start to fail. Third time through the order. Some pitchers get stronger. Which is interesting. You'd think, of course, as a, as a hitter sees them more, they would certainly be more, you know, ready for what's coming. But some pitchers, you know, you start out, and maybe if you're a three-pitch pitcher, as Stanton runs about as slow as anybody on the planet ever, <laughs> grounds out right back to the pitcher. But, you know, if you're a pitcher like Cole Reagans, maybe first inning is only fastball changeup. First time through the order, maybe it's a lot of that. And then you work in the slider and the cutter and a sinker if you've got one. And a curveball. And you really start to show them what you got. And that's how you're able to get distance. But Reagan's here. Kind of mixing all of his pitches pretty well. Pitch count in a pretty good spot. 79 pitches as we start this 8th inning. But do not want to fall behind batters like Jose Trevino. He's in the lineup because he's Garrett Cole's personal catcher. Of course, Austin Wells is looking to take that job. 
Trevino's got to be able to hit if he wants to keep that roster spot. Ben Rortvet waiting in the wings. Very scary. <laughs> and Trevino fans at a changeup way off the plate. I mean, could that have ever even looked like a strike? I get, you know, the break of that curve, or not the curveball, the, uh, the action of the changeup. You get the pronation there to kind of force that thing down and away to a righty. But I don't think that even started on the plate. That was so far off. Mayhew pop up. Should be an easy play for Vinny Pasquantino, and that is the end of the eighth. Cole Reagans with a shutout working here in the ninth. He's got nine, one, and two in the order. And we, we really do need to attack these hitters. We have a four-run lead. Pitch count still in a decent spot, but again, do not want to give free passes. Ideally, we don't get that pitch count to 100, so we'll see what we can do. That's what we need. Weak contact on the cutter. Massey's there, out number one. And you know what sucks is I have seen the Yankees in so many of these games. Just nobody reaches pretty much the entire game. A lot of strikeouts, no runs. As Pasquantino races Volpe to the bag himself for out number two. And Cole Reagans is just one Trent Grisham away from a complete game shutout. Flair in a shallow left. That drops for a base hit. Grisham trying to work it into two. Here's the throw and we got him. What a throw from the outfield to gun down Grisham trying to stretch for extra bases. What are you doing? Unbelievable performance by Cole Reagans. Those hits were not even hit especially hard either. And Reagans, of course, is your MVP. Nine innings, four hits, seven strikeouts, and one complete game shutout. What a day for Cole Reagans. Michael Garcia, four for five with a pair of doubles, two ribbies and a run. He seemed to be our best hitter by a mile today, and he's had a great season. Michael Garcia has been amazing. Up to an 82 overall, now hitting 267, 17 home runs. Unreal. And that's at 50 and 56 power. Unbelievable. Kyle Wright crushed it. Whip is high at 1.42, but has been great other than that. You got Schreiber back in the mix. And now Brady Singer trying for a complete game shutout. We still have the worst on base percentage in baseball. At just 300. But our pitching's been pretty good. Four ERA flat. That's right in the middle of the pack. Hey, right in the middle of the pack for strikeouts as well. Our pitching has not been the issue. Ah. And we're obviously working to get better hitters. Ball. I love that. One ball. One but it's a, it's a process. And you got to trust the process. It's not going to happen in one season. I'm... Super glad our pitching's been good. And I hope it can continue to be good. And it's not just a one-season thing. But our hitting continues to just be so poor. Gorman's going to help. Bobby Witt Jr. with a bounce-back season next year is going to help. Michael Garcia continuing to develop is going to be good. But outside of that, I mean, can we rely on Salvi next year? And then what else do we have in the outfield? We're going to have to call some guys up. Gavin Cross, Spencer Jones, Elijah Wood. Or not Elijah Wood. What? Elijah Green, maybe. We'll see what happens. But I think we got better today, even though our record certainly would argue the opposite. We were sellers at the deadline. Just, it seemed like it made the most sense. And we're dealing with the repercussions at the moment. Brady Singer, one strike away from a complete game shutout. This is what you wanted when you drafted Brady in the first round. Hasn't really been there. Had a good season or two to start out, but then got shelled in 2023. Need him to really bounce back in 2024 in real life. And it's happening a little bit now. Finally, at the end of the year, O'Neill Cruz grounds out. Brady Singer complete game shutout. And we have two complete game shutouts in our last couple of games here. And Brady Singer also struck out 10. What's happening? Domingo Herman also struck out 10 on the other side. He's also thrown a, a perfect game before, which is insane. Did that in 2023 with the Yankees, but I mean, let me just make sure. 
Legend difficulty across the board here. It's just we're crushing it right now. And it's a beautiful thing. I know we're 65 and 84, but September's going very well. Injuries, maybe not so much. And Kyle right now with a complete game shutout. Oh my goodness. I mean, our ERA is now 13th. It's dropped way under four. We're not allowing any runs now. <laughs> Kyle Wright's had a great season. I mean, if Javi Baez doesn't strike out, I'd be shocked. Oh, we can't throw him pitches to hit. But this game's unrealistic because Baez would never take that. Oh, there's no shot. He's not letting it fly there. That's more like it. Way out ahead of the a sweeper there from Kyle Wright. And again, Baez strikes out. Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe the game is realistic. Seven Ks for Kyle Wright. The rookie Parker Meadows, brother of Austin Meadows, is up. Try to sit him down as well. A little bit too much plate, but Bobby Witt Jr. has great range and a great arm. That's out number two. And that could be out number three, but it's going to be a tough play for the center fielder. Little blue pit gives him a base runner here in the ninth. Riley Green works a two-out single. Ground ball, chopper. Foul for strike two. Three and two, full count. Strike three, got him. Kerry Carpenter down looking, game over. It's another complete game shutout. Eight strikeouts for Kyle Wright. We are the shutout Royals at this point. Now often it's us getting shut out, but one way or another it's happening. And that's all that counts. And it's another win. Six in a row now. As we're just going to end September at this point. Brady Singer with a shutout. We're up 10-0. What is happening? Ground ball. Bo Bichette is in San Francisco. That's right. Big trade was made for him early. They brought in Jorge Soler in free agency. This is a tough, tough lineup. And Brady Singer is dominating them. There's no way around it. Ground ball. Should be an easy play for Bobby Witt. And it is. Last hope is Wilmer Flores. 0 for 3. The Giants fans in attendance will be upset. Because Brady Singer is going to retire him. Singer's in the zone, and now I'm super glad we didn't trade him. I never really was close to trading him, but I'm glad we didn't really consider it. Because now we have an emerging superstar on our hands. Two and two. Singer for the win. Ground ball at Franco. That's Why do I keep saying that? I, I think of Michael Franco. Michael Garcia, game over. Royals win. Singer again. This one was a little bit less... Pure and, and pristine. Four hits, two walks, only five strikeouts. But again, another complete game shutout. And that is the season, 73 and 89. I figured it, it didn't really make sense to just make you guys watch the team be bad. But we had a really fun September run, showing some real potential. And I, I love the potential and the fight that we showed down the stretch, even in a losing season. We'll go over all the stats the players produced as well as our free agent plan and free agency in the next episode. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to the offseason. That's the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.